Hello folks, welcome to the channel. In this video we're going to take a look at Callmarker's new Omni One Galvo laser engraver. This machine has a 5 watt 355 nanometer UV laser which has a much higher absorption rate than more common lasers like fiber, diode and infrared. So it can mark, engrave and cut materials with very low power compared to these other lasers by using a photolytic degradation process, also known as cold laser marking, that breaks down chemical bonds directly resulting in minimal heat stress on the material. This makes it an ideal all material marking machine that's particularly great at using on materials with high melting points like metal and glass, as well as on sensitive materials like paper, fabric and even food with no risk of damage or carbonization. And it can do this at speeds of up to 10,000 millimeters per second with amazing accuracy thanks to the laser's 0.002 millimeter spot size, which is less than 1 20th of a typical fiber laser spot size. Like most Galvo lasers, setup doesn't take long at all with just a few screws connecting the column to the base and the laser head. Both a 70mm lens for fine detail and a 150mm lens for an expanded work area are included with the machine. It also comes with both manual and electric lift for adjusting the focal distance to materials, as well as an emergency stop switch and a USB port for connecting to a machine and controlling with software like EasyCAD 2, which is also provided on a USB drive. It's also compatible with Lightburn, but you will need a Galvo laser license to connect and use it. I prefer Lightburn and already have a Galvo license, so that's what I connected to. I did that after plugging into my PC with the USB cable and opening Lightburn by clicking the Devices tab and Find My Laser. Lightburn then checks that the machine is connected and if it is, it shows up in the list. I then selected it and imported the EasyCAD configuration file which is provided on the USB drive. Then I clicked next, gave the machine a name and adjusted the work area parameters before finishing. The laser and COM port that it's connected to should then be selectable in the laser control window on the right side of the page, and it should say ready when it's connected and working. The first thing that I wanted to do after connecting to Lightburn was calibrate the lens. I've never had an issue with bulging or skewing when engraving with Galvo lasers like this, but I have had a few that didn't engrave at the right scale, so to check that, I first set up a piece of black construction paper on the provided lift and set the focal distance from the top of the work surface to the middle of the joint in the laser head enclosure. In my case that would be 339mm for the 150mm lens and 204mm for the 70mm lens. I then drew a 25mm square box on the canvas and set the process mode to line in cuts and layers, then set the speed to 500mm per second, the frequency to 30kHz, the pulse width to 1 nanosecond, and the number of passes to 2. Notice that the power can't be adjusted because UV lasers don't support a power setting. They operate at the same input power and the frequency and pulse settings are used to adjust the output power along with scanning direction and number of passes to get the desired engraving or cutting effect. Next, I click frame to position the material according to the blue framing lines that are projected onto it and then click start to mark it. Using a ruler, I then check the dimensions of the box to find that it perfectly matched the dimensions in the software, so no scale adjustment was needed in my case. If you do find that your designs aren't being engraved in the right size, just do the same test that I did, then divide the dimensions that it should be by the dimensions that it was engraved at, and multiply by 100 to get the percentage that you need to input under scale settings in the device settings. Next, I imported my logo, traced it, and used the same settings to mark it on the paper as well. There were no issues with how it turned out, so next I tried cutting the same logo from a piece of felt. This time I kept the frequency and pulse width the same, but lowered the speed to 200mm per second and made three passes. Notice how the laser did not burn the edges where other lasers definitely would have. Now 
Next, I engraved the logo into a piece of basswood using 1000 millimeters per second, 30 kilohertz, one nanosecond pulse width, and 0.01 millimeter line intervals. I attempted to engrave a high resolution image onto another piece of basswood using the same settings in Jarvis mode, and although I could have adjusted the settings to make it engrave darker, I'm still impressed by the detail that this laser produces. You definitely wouldn't get this result from a diode laser. The spot size from this machine is super fine. Next, I ran a test file on an anodized aluminum card with various settings which produced good results, so I engraved my logo and website address on a few more using some of those settings. Next, I used Lightburn's material test tool to create a test grid for steel with various frequency and interval settings to see what sort of colors they produced. Next, I broke my logo up into different parts in different layers in Lightburn, then used different settings from the test grid for each layer to engrave the logo on steel in different colors. This turned out pretty good, so I decided to try it again using the same settings on a piece of brass. Next, I engraved a grayscale image on a brass coin using 2000 millimeters per second, 30 kilohertz, one nanosecond pulse width, 1000 DPI in 3D slices mode, and 100 passes to create a 2.5D engraving effect. This looks really good. I made another with slightly different settings which produced different colors as well.
Not only does this machine have the ability to engrave metal, but it can also cut metal sheets up to 0.2 millimeters thick. To demonstrate, I cut these battery strips with cell level fusing out of 0.2 millimeter thick copper sheet using 10 millimeters per second, 30 kilohertz, 1 nanosecond pulse width, and 2 passes. Next, I engraved a high resolution image onto a piece of coated aluminum using 300 millimeters per second, 30 kilohertz, one nanosecond pulse width, and 1000 dots per inch in Jarvis mode. This turned out really nice, so I engraved it again on a piece of black acrylic and a piece of clear polycarbonate using the same settings and got the same results. As I mentioned earlier, this machine can also engrave glass, but unlike other types of laser engravers, UV lasers don't require the glass to be pre-treated with any sort of coating first. They can engrave directly onto any type of glass or crystal, and they do a much better job of it. The settings that I used for this were 100 millimeters per second, 30 kilohertz, 1 nanosecond pulse width, and 500 dots per inch. To emphasize how little heat this laser generates, I engraved another image into this bay leaf. It doesn't look like it did much at first, but holding it up to a light paints a very different picture. It's a little tough to see on camera, but the laser removed portions of the leaf according to the Jarvis dithering, but it left the cell walls behind to create a sort of honeycomb effect without burning anything. This is useful not only to reduce wasted time and materials and to make your work more visually appealing, but it can also be applied to culinary arts for decorating food. Of course, you'll want to make sure that your machine and everything is clean and sterilized for this sort of work, but UV lasers are a perfect non-toxic option for decorating different foods for special events or just for fun, without burning and ruining the taste of the food in the process.
So that's it for this video, folks. Admittedly, this was my first time using a UV laser, so I've still got a bit more testing to do to dial in the settings, but it's been a great experience so far. It can do everything that my B4 fiber lasers can do, and a lot more. I like the low heat zero burn nature of this machine, and especially having the ability to engrave glass and crystal without needing any coatings. But let me know what you think of it in the comments, and if you're interested in getting one, then check out the links in the video description. Thanks for watching, and take care.